Good morning and welcome to our pause for prayer. I don't know about you, but for a number of people I've been speaking with in the last week, lockdown is starting to cause some stress and even a little depression. These are difficult times for many, especially if they're worried about loved ones they can't visit, if they're living on their own and are feeling very lonely, or if they're living in family situations are diff which are difficult and volatile. I wanted us to spend some time this morning again in the Psalms to help us to hear and understand these Psalms a little better and to help us in prayer. We will again be using Pat Marsh's book, Dwelling in the Psalms. I love the honesty and truth which floods the Psalms. And today we want to look prayerfully at some of the Psalms which were written during times of struggle and distress. And also some that encourage us to sing praise to God, to totally trust him for everything and that realise God's vast and protective love. First, let us use some of the words of Psalm 145 to come into God's presence in worship to him. Psalm 145 starts, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. This psalm highlights for us some of the many attributes of God. The psalmist is right when he declares in verse 3, no one can measure his greatness. He continues in the psalm with wonderful declarations, such as, the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creatures. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. And the Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their heavy loads. The Lord is close to all who call on him. We know as well that these statements are true. Even if our mood, our feelings would try and tell us otherwise. And so we pray a prayer of thankfulness to God. Let's pray. God of mercy and grace, thank you that you chose to reveal yourself to your people. Thank you for your involvement in our lives, for your compassion and love, and for your desire to heal and to transform. Thank you for answers to prayer and for your goodness to us in so many ways. Help us to put you higher than anything else. Fill our hearts with thankfulness and keep us praising. Amen. I love the phrase in the psalm we've just read which says, The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. This psalm is credited to King David and so we know from his life story that these words are tried and tested. On many occasions David fell, fell into temptation, into depression, into fear. And often he felt he was trying to bear, bear too heavy a load. It was in these times that the psalmist writes some wonderful, raw, honest and truthful words. We're going to use some of those psalms this morning as we try to put into words how we sometimes feel. Perhaps it's how you feel this morning with all that's going on around you. I would encourage you to spend this time in God's presence. Listen to him. Cry out to him. Find encouragement to him. We turn to Psalm 34, first off, where we read, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Isn't it wonderful to know that we can come to God in desperation and he still hears us? 
Sometimes I think our culture and our tradition have taught us that there's a right way and a wrong way to pray. That we have to be polite to God and only use churchy sort of words. But the truth is that the psalmist cried out in desperation out of a broken heart and a crushed spirit. Perhaps you can relate to that today. If so, don't be afraid to cry out to God. He already knows your heart. So let's come to him in prayer. God of compassion, thank you that you hear our prayers when we cry to you. Thank you that you are constantly seeking to rescue those who live through you. Thank you that your comfort that you comfort the sorrowing, strengthen the weary, and mend the brokenhearted. Thank you, Lord, for when I've tasted the sweet relief of this truth in my life. Thank you that I can know with total confidence that however impossible my circumstances might seem, however painful or difficult, you will pull me through. Lord, help me to live as you would have me live and to trust totally in you. Amen. I love the words found in verse 8 of Psalm 56, where it says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has felt so overwhelmed at times that you just have to sit down and have a good cry. This must also have been the experience of David. David, a king, a warrior, the boy who killed the giant. And so I find great comfort that this man of God, who God refers to as a man after my own heart, cried when things were too much for him too. And often that we can think no one else sees our brokenness, no one else cares or understands, nobody sees my tears. But David assures us in verse 8 of the psalm, you have collected my tears in your bottle, you have recorded each one in your book. Reflecting on this psalm, part Pat Marsh says, fear is a crippling human emotion. Sometimes it grips us so intensely the tears pour out of us. Two powerful images come together in the psalm. An image of blind fear alongside the picture of the tenderness of God who collects all our tears in the bottle. Not a single tear is overlooked by him. Fear can provoke us into unhelpful, sometimes even violent reactions. But when we remember that God cares so much that he values every single tear, then we can be assured that he will rescue us. There's no need for us to react negatively. God will save us if we call upon him. And it's with those words ringing in our ears that we come to God in prayer again. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the safety valve of tears. Sometimes there are more authentic prayer than any words I can voice. The only true expression of my feelings. Thank you that it's perfectly okay to cry with you. When fears overwhelm me and tears break through, Thank you that you understand and know. Thank you that not even one tear escapes your notice. Thank you for the safety valve of tears and the deep assurance of your love. Amen. The famous words at the beginning of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. These words set the scene for the rest of the psalm in which the psalmist declares total trust in God. In her reflection on it, Pat Marsh says, Here we have a psalm expressing total trust in God. However much the circumstances around the writer seem threateningly beyond his control. There is imagery of nations in uproar, 
people at war, even the earth itself disintegrating. And amid all these apparent disasters, as when Jesus calmed the storm that was breaking up the disciples' boats, we have those words, be still. Be still and know that I am God. There's something about stillness that's important in strengthening our relationship with God. It can seem the most counterintuitive thing to do sometimes, but in active stillness, our breathing settles, our fear subsides, and we can begin to sense the reality and power of the strong presence of God around us, beside us, and within us. In the prayer that Pat writes to accompany this psalm, I love that she, she has the honesty to say, what is it all about, Lord, when she's talking about the disasters that are going on round about, about people dying in ways they don't deserve. And as if this prayer has been written as a prayer of many of our hearts for such a time as this. And so we come together and we pause in God's presence and we pray. Let us pray. Loving God, holy and strong, sometimes I feel so helpless in the face of things going wrong. In my life, my neighbourhood, our world. Problems that seem insolu insoluble, crises of every kind, disasters that feel unwarranted, and people suffering, and worse still, dying in ways they don't deserve. And I want to ask, what's it all about, Lord? But you say to me, be still. Be still and know I am in control. Teach me that depth of stillness, Lord. Lead me to that degree of surrender. Calm my restlessness. Still my anger. Dissipate my pain and take me deeper into you. Teach me, Lord, to be still, that I may know your ever-present reality. Amen. As we draw our pause for prayer to a close this week, we change the tempo a little as we reflect on the words of Psalm 47, where verses 6 and 7 say, Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. Singing praises to God is a really important part of my own daily rhythm of life. As soon as I get up in the morning, I turn on my praise music. Sometimes this would be quiet instrumental praise and worship. And at other times, I'm sure my neighbours can hear my music without the windows even being open. But despite the style of music, the heart of it is always the same. Praise and worship of God. As Pat Marsh says in reflection and prayer on this hymn, that on this psalm, there's something about singing out our praises that enlarges our capacity to receive God's love. As we engage in vibrant worship, we sense an expansion of his energy within us. It's a very reciprocal thing and it changes us. It helps us to be more open to his special relationship with us. Joyous praise is an expression of love and thankfulness which grows a greater love within us. Psalm 47 names that and encourages it. Sing, sing wholeheartedly to the King. Praise him in the good times and in the bad. You'll never regret it. Let us pray. Father God, King over all the earth, there are times when I need to be still with you and times when I need to sing my heart out to you. And I need both. Thank you for the glorious gift of music and song, for the way that praise unites my spirit with yours and opens my soul to receive more of your love. 
put a song in my heart, Lord, and help me sing. No matter what, make my whole life an anthem of praise. Amen. We finish this morning by listening or joining together with the Ray family as they lead us in that beautiful song, 10,000 Reasons. As you meditate on the words of this song or indeed join in with it, may it speak to your heart. Perhaps you could take a few moments on your own and go back and read over the full Psalms that we have touched on this morning. But I hope and pray that whatever your week holds for you, that in it all, you will be still and know that God is the God of your life. But yet you will st still find time to sing and praise and worship and lift your praise to him because of what he's done. Let's enjoy the Ray family as they sing to you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His home. 